Hi everybody. This video is going to show you how to use DSA to create a DigiLux 5 dashboard that is accessible using your Amazon Echo and Alexa. For this example, I'm going to use the system DS link and a REST server DS link and the DigiLux 5 data flow. Then I'll create two simple Alexa skills one for looking at your current CPU load and reporting it, and another for changing your target CPU load. And I'll make a very simple dashboard that uses those two metrics. So first, there are two DS links you'll need for this whole process. First, you'll add a system DS link to read data from your system monitor. If you don't already have that, you can go to your data panel, go to sys, and then links. I already have it installed, so I don't need to install it, but if I were going to, I'd go to install link, select it from this drop down. There it is, system, and then click invoke. And same for the rest, which again, I already have it installed, but if I didn't, it'd be the same thing. Choose rest fr server from the menu. And then once those are installed, for me, they're already started, but to start them, you would right click and select start link for both of those. Then you go to downstream and you find those two DS links. Here's the system DS link. You can see it's reporting uh, my system data, my CPU usage. This is one of the metrics we'll use. Um, it's hovering around zero to five percent. Um, and my rest DS link right now is empty. There are no nodes. So I'm going to add some nodes. First, I need to create a REST server. You want to make sure you use the data host type. That'll let Alexa write to it. Um, I'll just name it 8020, and I'll use port 8020, which is the default. I'll click Invoke. Now I have this REST server, and I'll add two values on it. I'll call the first one CPU load. There it is. And the second one, CPU target. I'm choosing a data type of number for each of these. And there are my two metrics. I could set them from here if I wanted to. Um, maybe I could say I want a target CPU load 40%. Uh, next, you'll need to create some data flow so that one of these rest nodes um, the CPU load will update with the live system data. So to create that data flow, you go to downstream data flow, right click, create a data flow, name it whatever you like, and then open the data flow view. Um, from here, you want to select that system metric that you want to use, in our case, CPU usage and drag it to the data flow. You can see the value updating live with the CPU load changing. If we use this value, right, Alexa would give us whatever value is live um, at the moment that we ask her. And you can see that there are a number of fluctuations, so that's not necessarily the most useful. Probably we want her to give us an average from the last 10 seconds or the last 50 entries, maybe the highest from that range, maybe the average. Um, so we'll just add some really quick data flow to do that. I'll use the real-time recorder block to start grabbing those values and remembering them. And I'll use, this is the value, we'll call it load. You can see it's recording. Um, I don't need 1,024 of these entries. Let's say we'll cap it at 50. We can pin this value if we want to visually see how the blocks are connected in the data flow. Um, next, if Alexa were to read out this entire reading, we'd have to listen to her say a lot, right? So to prevent that, we'll use a format number block. Ah, but very important. First, we need to use the table aggregation block to grab 
the value. So our column was called load, I think. And we want the, let's say the average, and then, then we can round and we'll use, say, a format with a precision of one decimal point like that. And then this output number here is the one that we can bind to our REST node. This 6.6, 6.7, um, this is a great value for her to be giving us. So go to REST, CPU load, right click, and drag the set action to the data flow. And this updates the REST node live with the value of the um, format number block. Just need to make sure that auto run is enabled um, and that way it will update live. Now our REST node of CPU load is updating live with the average of the last uh, 50 entries for CPU usage. Now, another thing we can do is create a simple dashboard that updates using that REST data. So say I have a very simple dashboard here, just a gauge. Um, you can see there's a, a value represented by this green bar. Right now it's at 50%. There's a target value represented by this red bar. Right now it's at 75%. These are placeholders. Uh, we have a label of CPU load and units of percent. This can all be modified. And so if these values change, right, the graphic changes, and if we bind these values to them, like so, you can see the gauge visually changes to reflect the current value and target. So the next thing that we want to do is to be able to ask the Amazon Echo for the current CPU load value. And then after that, we also want to ask the Echo to write a new CPU target value. Okay, so to do this, we have to create something called Alexa skill. Um, to create an Alexa skill, you want to go to developer.amazon.com. Um, you'll need to create an account if you don't already have one. You'll go to apps and services and then you'll choose Alexa at the top of the screen. Choose Alexa Skills Kit, and here's where, you're, where you will create your skill. So um, we'll create two separate skills um, for right now. Uh, more advanced Alexa users, you could also combine um, both of these intents into one skill, but for now we'll keep it basic. So let's name this new one System Log. And to invoke it, we'll call it system log. So we'll say um, Alexa tell system log to, um, etc. So sorry, I can't find the answer to the question. <laughs> okay. Um, so the next thing we'll need is to create a Lambda function on Amazon. Now you can also create this function in other ways. It's easy to just have it hosted on Lambda. That's what we'll do for the example. You don't have to do it. Um, to create a Lambda function, you'll want to go to console.aws.amazon.com. Um, you'll need to create an Amazon Web Services account in addition to a developer account um, if you don't already have that. And make sure when you sign up that you choose the region North Virginia. It's the only one that works with Alexa right now. Um, because it's still a fairly new service. So you want to go to Lambda um, and create a new function. You can see I have some old functions here. Um, you can skip the blueprint stage because you'll just be able to copy and paste the example code that's below this video. So I'm calling this, actually, no, this one we should call get CPU current value. Why not? Um, and you can paste your code here. You can also upload a zip file. Um, I have code that I will paste for getting the CPU load. So I'll just copy this, paste it here. 
as my handler, I'll use a basic execution role, or as my role, I'll use a basic execution role that I created. Um, if you don't have one yet, you can create one choosing this option here. Leave all of the options default, click next, and create function. Now you can take this ARN right here, copy that, paste it in your Alexa skill. Now the Alexa skill knows to use this function. Click next. Uh, you see I have this error that says, please make sure that the Alexa skills kit is selected for the event source type. So we still need to do that. So we can go in here, select event source, and add Alexa skills kit, submit. Now it should let us move on. Now Alexa also likes to receive needs to receive uh, an intense schema and some sample utterances. I have examples for those as well. This is the simplest possible intent schema. This skill has only one intent. It's called get CPU and it doesn't need to hear a value from you. It just needs you to initialize uh, the skill. So it's very, very simple. Um, and for sample utterances, since there's only one intent, they all start with the same intent name. And these are just the commands that will uh, initialize the skill and the single intent in the skill. So I'm copying all of those, pasting them under sample utterances, and clicking next. Um, of course, in the code, um, you'll need to replace this URL with um, the URL of your DGLux followed by your um, server and your node. One of the sample utterances was simply help. So I can type that here as though I'm saying it to the echo. I can click ask system log. And here is what she would say to us. Uh, your current CPU usage is 0.9%. So it seems to be working. Um, I can also copy, to debug, I can copy this Lambda request, um, paste it in here as my test event, and test in Lambda as well. The value has changed slightly since the last time, but here's her response now. Um, and I have my echo set up right here, so I can talk to her here as well. Um, but first I need to remember what we called this skill, system log. So I can say any of the utterances here. Alexa, ask system log for CPU load. Your current CPU usage is 0.8%. So there's her reply. And then we can also see that um, on our card in the Alexa app. So our first skill is working. Um, I'll create the second skill again. Um, you can skip over this part if you feel like you already have it. Um, it'll be the exact same steps to create the second skill. Um, it's a slightly more complicated because we are posting to REST instead of only getting the value of a REST node. OK, so I'll create a second Lambda function. Find my basic execution handler, create my function, make sure I specify Alexa skills as the event source, and copy my ARN, then go back to the developer console, create a new skill. Paste my ARN. Um, here I have a slightly more complicated intent schema because our intent has a slot, um, which means a value that we must tell it. Um, since we're telling it to update a system preference number, it needs to hear a number from us. So I'll post that JSON there 
and then again there's only one intent so all of these sample utterances begin with the same intent name and of course again you'll replace the host path and port with your own um, information. You can use either post or put. It doesn't matter for this program. This is the code to get the value um, of the slot, so the number that you're telling her. Okay, our intent schema is built. So what are our utterances? So we could say change target to something. Okay, and she says, I have updated your target to 30%. Let's see if that's true. Um, here we can see CPU target is now 30. To see that again, we could change this to 20. Ask system preferences. See, she replies 20, and the value of the node is now 20, and you can see the target of the gauge has gone down. Um, and again, for debugging, you can copy this lambda JSON, add it as your test event uh, for testing here. Here's where any console output um, would appear. And since it now appears to be working, I just need to remember the invocation name for talking to her. We called it system preferences. And remember the utterances that we used, so something like uh, change target to something. And you can see the value of the node here um, will change when I talk to her. Alexa, tell system preferences to change target to 15. I have updated your target to 15%. And you can see that updated in our REST node as well as our gauge and a card appeared um, notifying us that it worked. So those are some simple steps for using your Amazon Echo and Alexa with DSA and DGLux. Um, you can use these same steps to make any data in your DSA system accessible to Alexa and to ask her to read and write to that data. Uh, thank you very much.